With news filtering through that the world time trial champion Rowan Dennis had mysteriously abandoned the tour, his Bahrain Merida teammate Sonny Colbrelli moved up to the front on the climb. There's a bunch of speculation, but Rohan Dennis just, just pulling out of the race. Super odd. I mean, just pulling out and apparently was super aggressive today, making the breakaway win. I got nightmares in my head. I fear thoughts build up until I can't My mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. I got nightmares in my head. I fear the thoughts build up until Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In the previous analysis, I described the price of the house and the cost of the vehicle involved in the incident. Are these really a factor? Are finances a factor when you have a family and you're retiring in your early 30s? Well, I would imagine they have to be. But even if you've made a truckload of money, truckloads of money only go so far when you have a family of four and no one is really working anymore. And so one wonders what were the underlying stresses driving this incident. That could be a stressor, but I think the more important question is regarding the temperament of Rowan Dennis. This same question was asked once upon a time about O.J. Simpson and Oscar Pistorius. We were asking the same thing about Colin Strickland and Caitlin Armstrong. That was during our analysis of the Mo Wilson trial. So in effect, what are we asking? Well, we're asking, is he a hothead? The question has relevance given what we know and what has been captured on video at the scene. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're finding this analysis worthwhile, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, according to the media... Um, And according to a specific newspaper, I think it's called The Advertiser, police who have viewed security video believe that Melissa Hoskins, 32, jumped into the hood or onto the hood of the Volkswagen while Dennis, 33, was behind the wheel. And she tried to grab the door handle. Now, the part that is problematic with, with all of this is that Dennis allegedly did not stop the vehicle, but he kept driving. And as a result, the mother of two fell to the ground, and it seems likely, it seems logical, that when she fell to the ground, she was driven over. And as a result of that, she was severely injured and died at a local hospital. Now, that's also important to stress She didn't die at the scene. She didn't die in the road. She was kept alive and then died at a local hospital. Now, although we don't know why Hoskins jumped on the vehicle, the bigger question, I think, is why Dennis did not hit the brakes. Well, allegedly, why didn't he stop? Why didn't he stop immediately after that? Hoskins and Dennis, both former Olympians who recently retired, married in 2018. Dennis has not entered a plea and is due back in court on March 13th. Again, the critical question is, why didn't Dennis allegedly not hit the brakes? I think it's early days to be cobbling together an identity and we get temperament through identity. And clearly in the world of professional sports, one tantrum doesn't make a hothead. But it has to be said on stage 12, Of the 2019 Tour de France, Rowan Dennis did something that seldom, if ever seen anywhere by anyone in professional cycling. According to Bicycling Magazine that covered this incident at the time, quote, Dennis quit at the base of the Calder Pera Sword, the first of two Category 1 climbs on Thursday's stage in the Pyrenees. The 29-year-old Australian did not give any reasons for quitting, but later called it the right decision based on how he was feeling. The Bahrain Merida rider has been trying to make the early breakaway, or he had been trying to make the early breakaway in stage 12, a largely transitional stage between Toulouse and Bagnares de Boer. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But with about 80 kilometers to go, he threw in the towel, failing to alert his team in the process. Officials then treated him as a missing person on the stage. For, I mean, get this, for a few hours, no one knew where he was. 
and his team even released an alarming statement on Twitter as uh, per Bicycling Magazine. Quote, our priority is the welfare of all our riders, so we will launch an immediate investigation, but will not be commenting further until we have established what has happened to Rowan Dennis. So even his team didn't know where they were. And then another magazine, Velo, later reported on Dennis's bizarre tour departure. They wrote, Rowan Dennis dressed casually, walked off his bus and straight toward a finish line that he never crossed. He was flanked by his agent, Andrew McQuaid, and his press officer. Behind him, reporters and cameras trailed like the tail of a comet. His Tour de France was over, and he wouldn't say why. Two hours earlier, some 80 kilometers into the 12th stage of the Tour, at a feed zone, Dennis climbed off his bike and leaned it against the back of a Bahrain Soigneur car. His first team car was ahead, behind the brake, and the second car the one behind the main peloton drove right past him. It parked further up the road. Well, you can't drive backwards on the tour route under any circumstances. And so the sports director had to run back. And he said, we tried to speak, we tried to speak with him. And he was standing in a 10 deep media scrum outside the team bus after the stage. He said, we stopped the car and tried to find a solution to what's going on. But he would not talk. So basically, he just got off the bike without telling anyone without giving any explanation and basically played the the strong silent type now the interesting aftermath to all of this was that Bahrain Merida fired Rowan Dennis and he then appealed for unfair dismissal and and lost well lost as far as I know at the time, the only explanation which came from the sports director of the team was, for sure, it's got nothing to do with his physical condition. Now, if Dennis could abandon the tour without so much as an explanation, could he abandon his home, albeit temporarily, in a similar and similarly alarming way? Well, this is what came up four years ago in Velo, this idea dealing with his mental health, apparently from his own teammates, quote, we do know he has genuine problems with explosive, angry responses to relatively innocuous challenges. He's a hothead. Former teammates, managers, teams, team staff, it seems everyone has a Rowan story. Each rider or team member I contacted in the last few hours said some version of the same. Yes, it's a problem. This isn't the first time. It's a pattern. Now, recently, in the aftermath to this horrible tragedy in Adelaide, we've, we've heard a similar, if cryptic, remark from Melissa Hoskins' manager, what is her name, uh, Rochelle Gilmore, who said, from the moment she started dating Rowan, she committed 100% to all of the troubles and difficulties that he went through in his career. And it's hard to imagine that some of these weren't self-created. According to Velo News, quote, he needs help, two former teammates told me, asking that I not use any specific stories they told. It's a phrase that turns the story from one of bemused confusion. Why wouldn't, an, why wouldn't an elite athlete do that to one that feels quite sad? Well, now it feels like we, it's elevated. It's uh, been escalated to the point not of sad, but tragic and horrible. So in 2019, what prompted that rash move to quit? What is the background to that whole story? Well, according to Velo, quote, there were rumors of an argument at the team bus that morning. A presenter for Eurosport said that she and her team witnessed obvious tensions between Dennis and his team. Meanwhile, the sports director said that there was no argument that morning. We know that Dennis has had issues with his time trial bike all season, was Dennis sent back for bottles or some other duty that he felt was insulting to a rider of his caliber? No, I never asked him to bring the water in the race, his sports director said. Actually, I even said to him for the last two days, yesterday and today, save your energy for tomorrow, for tomorrow's time trial. The sports director did his best to explain without quite explaining anything. He did say regarding Rowan, He's a special guy, let's say. All the champions are. He's really 100% when he wants something. It's difficult to make everybody happy in every single moment. And so you, from that statement, you kind of get an, a, a feeling 
a perception that you're dealing with someone who's quite sensitive, but, but perhaps also quite spoiled. Now, you can imagine a champion and perhaps being a perfectionist and getting everything he wants in a professional situation, someone who's used to having his way, who's used to perhaps being treated like royalty, finding himself suddenly in a family setting where things are completely different. Family life, especially with two small children, and I mean, Christmas is a time where, where that is front and center, where family life is kind of the focus, and a lot of the other things are sort of given, um, you know, postponed or, or given second priority. Family life is, you know, family life. And that is arguably about the opposite to being the center of attention. It's about sacrifice. It's about not getting what you want. Going back to the article in Velo, he's the guy. He wants to have everything 100%. It's not easy to have everything 100%. The specifics of the slight are largely irrelevant to the end result. I've got a feeling the same can and will be said about whatever happened on the 30th. There was some slight that perhaps he took personally and then his temperament possibly took over, possibly. Going back to Velo, this is a rider who made a decision on the side of the road to pull himself out of the world's biggest bike race on the eve of his best chance to win a stage with no apparent physical ailments of any kind. There is no argument with management, no spat with a teammate that justifies that decision or makes it rational. And I think the same can be said about what's just happened. No argument with a wife or a child, no spat with a spouse justifies what apparently allegedly happened here. And so if it's not rational, then it's irrational. Or put otherwise, isn't it, isn't it uh, emotional? In 2015, a blog described Rowan Dennis somewhat tongue-in-cheek as the angriest man in pro cycling before quipping, are you frightened? Because I'm not frightened. And then in July 2019, the Telegraph took this issue a lot more seriously. Quote, Dennis does have a reputation as a hothead and there are rumors that he was unhappy with his time trial kit and his team. He was seen arguing with team staff before the start of Thursday's stage. But another clue for his behavior may lie in an interview he did with the Stanley Street Social podcast in January when he alluded to mental health issues. So this is quite important. It's where Rowan Dennis himself, in his own words, talks about his own mental health. And this, this is what he said. He said, to this day, there are times when I think, what the hell am I doing? In 2018, I reckon there were half a dozen times when I thought I could quit right now. And January last year was the big one. I did not want to race my bike ever again. I was over the sport. But after a while, you snap out of it. And maybe it's a bit of a depressed period for a week or something. And then you realize why you like it again. I have these little periods when things aren't going well across the board. Sometimes it's a bit tough. It's the same with every job. You're bashing your head against the wall. What am I doing? What am I doing? Eventually that wall shows a crack and, and then you... Okay, that's why I'm doing it. But I still go through those periods. In an SBS Sport article, Dennis is described as unashamed, unashamedly a sensitive one-strike-and-you're-out personality. He can be jovial, insightful, and kindly acknowledge those he warrants. If he perceives you've wronged him, however, good luck. I don't know, this is kind of a disclaimer, I don't know Rowan Dennis very well. I haven't really followed him as much as other riders. But when you Google the idea of Rowan Dennis hothead, you do come up with some coverage in the mainstream media. Is it relevant? Is it relevant to what happened here? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.